story? Yeah. Uh, do you see AJ Terrell as a leader of the secondary? It's hard to put, you know, uh, labels on guys like that so far. I mean, he's a good, obviously proves it every day. He gets better. Uh, fun to coach, fun to work with. I'm excited about his progress. Yeah, it's with the whole staff, constant communication with him, Marquise, uh, offensive staff. I mean, that's, that's, that's where the best staffs have been on. You, you know, we ask the players, you know, to be connected, you got to have the staffs being connected too. Um, same thing we ask players, we ask of the staffs, and I hold myself to that standard as well. But a lot of things come up. Maybe we just kind of talk through some situations, something that comes up, and we're just going back and forth. So, you know, what we're doing is we're trying to challenge and make it hard and see who emerges. Um, so that, that's really it. Well, you know, obviously, this is the first time working with these guys. Um, and they got their, both of them are very, very smart players. That's one thing that's obvious about, about both of them. And they got pretty good hands, and we're just trying to, we're trying to push it, you know, see what these guys can do. And that's part of the part of our job is to figure out what they can do instead of just saying, oh, he can't do this and that. You know, we're trying to test it, push them, and see. And then you can see we're trying to be aggressive with certain things, see if we can make certain throws. If you don't take those chances in practice, it'll never happen in the game. Um, the easiest thing to do would be to check it down all day and, and feel good and say, hey, right, pad your stats. We're not going to do that. So, uh, but happy with both those guys. No, I don't, no, I don't think that at all. I mean, it just depends. I mean, it's a long season, and you got 17 games. You guys know that. I mean, we added a, obviously added a game this year. See who can carve out a role, who, who can take over on third down, uh, and then you get into the situation. But I think the competition is good for the entire entire room. I mean, those those young guys, Hawk, uh, Little Hawk, and um, as I said, we got we got two two Jay Hawkins on there, Jalen and Javian. So we call them Little Hawk. But uh, Little Hawk and Caleb, I mean, they're competing. They're doing good things, making progress every day. Amen. Yeah, Coach, do you have your uh, quarterbacks on a pitch count throughout camp or how much you want to throw? Sure. Face them out and so forth? Yeah, we try to be fair. I mean, with Matt, there's obviously things we need to get done. We constantly monitor throws, what routes we're running, who's running what. Um, and then with, with AJ and Felipe, you know, it's – you got to make sure this is the time. I mean, if you're going to try to develop quarterbacks, they need reps. And so that's what the preseason will be very valuable for those guys. Yes, I mean, everything we do, it's, we're trying the best we can to make sure we're giving them a fair shot to evaluate guys and, and, to, and to give them so you're apples to apples, you know, because you could change, you can manipulate a lot of things by scripting. So, you know, if you want to script for success and, and feel good in, in August and, and, and make it really easy for them and, and pad stats, I don't think it helps them. So that, that's what we're trying to do. We, we, we evaluate everything every night, what we're calling for them, what we're running, so we can actually get an objective opinion about how they're coming along. And that was my next question. How important is this evaluation of the first block of practice, the first four of practice? Yeah, well, it's just – Right. And they'll have a day off tomorrow, and we'll come back Tuesday, and we'll be in pads, and so it's the next step. And then we start adding, adding things to practice situationally. Uh, and ultimately to get them ready to go play a game. And we'll have that scrimmage on, on Saturday. Another step, try to get these young guys that never been in an NFL game, and even for us as a staff, our communication, and then we get ready to play the next Friday. Um, but all that stuff, it helps. Alex, in back. When you're looking at your DBs, what, what characteristics do you look for in like a number one? What are you looking for in that guy to have? Well, and it says, what, you know, what scheme are you playing? And I'm not, I'm not saying that to be a, a smart aleck or anything, but that depends what you're going to do. I mean, if the guy's really good at man and how you're evaluating, or if you're going to play multiple coverages, you've got to have a guy that's able to, to come up and tackle, it has got good vision, and to be able to play in zone coverage. And so we're multiple back there. Um, I mean, obviously, there's, there's certain outliers that can play in any scheme. And we've seen that, and there's a couple of those guys around the league. But, uh, you know, th these guys right here, I mean, we, when you take over here, we've added some guys. Um, see who can handle what, what we're throwing at them schematically. And they're out there competing. There's really good competition. 
you know, Chris Williamson keeps showing up, showed up again today. So that's, yeah. Are you uh, starting to see some growth in terms of your, of your uh, defensive execution and how they're operating within D, uh, Dean's uh, system, you know, from the spring and all the way up? Are you seeing this in terms of how they're able to execute? I think you're seeing it really in all three phases. Uh, you are. Like I said, we're, th we're throwing a lot at them. We're challenging them, and some guys are emerging, and it, it's fun to watch. It's, it... Uh, when it comes to, um, um, uh, uh, skip me. Michael. Go ahead. <laughs> Michael. Uh, so think about that, Michael. Do you need to see more, or maybe give nine more reps this year than, say, a year from now, two years from now, because everything is new? Like, is that part of it, too? Well, I mean, it depends on the player. You know, guys like Matt, they want to work. You know, so, so, you know, he's dealt with all different things. And where he's at, we know there's been several conversations as we're building this thing up to get him ready to play for week one. How many reps he needs, how many throws. Um, and you just got to evaluate that year to year. And a, part, I mean, a big part of it's on the player. I mean, he knows his body pretty well, clearly. He's been playing this, been playing this long. Um, so it's all the plan is to get ready to go September 12th for him. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we have. Um, it'll be interesting around the league. I mean, that's what's the fun part about planning this stuff out. And everybody's going to do what they think is best for their team. Uh, you've seen the last couple of years, you know, the trend, what some teams were doing, not playing guys at ours. You know, some people stuck to the, the plan. Uh, you know, who knows? You know, there used to be the old narrative that the third game was the, the mock. I think that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It'll, it'll be interesting to watch around the league how people handle the three preseason games. The biggest thing, too, is you've got to make an evaluation after all these games. So I think it's fair to make sure that everybody gets out there and you get a, you get a look at them, see them live in a real football game. Because um, those are the big decisions you've got to make to cut down after every game. Did you miss those last year, those preseason games? Were those like the, the big evaluation piece that you missed? Well, you know, it's a, it's a good subjective argument depending on who you talk to. Um, but I think for a lot of these young guys, there's an opportunity. Uh, you, know, you could make a strong argument that a, Last year's undrafted free agent class, they missed out on a lot of opportunities. You know, guys kind of went with what they had. Obviously, the, the rosters uh, shrunk down initially in training camp, and you didn't have any, any live games to, to evaluate them on. So I, I would think it, it did. It maybe was a detriment to last year's class. But again, you could ask every coach in the league, they give you a different, possibly a different opinion. So where are you at on, on the spectrum? Some people were. You know, not playing them at all, and then, you know, Bill Jeff over here playing them all the time. So, what, what should we expect uh, going into the three games? Is two going to be the three now, or three to three? That, that's what will be interesting to watch, d -Led. You know, because it, even the rhythm in your schedule, like, you know, and what day you play on, right? So, we're playing Sunday night against Cleveland. Right. And you, you don't have to cram and get ready to go, whether you're home or away, to play, you know, preseason four. And so, how you want to treat the week after, that, that new bye week you've got. Um, and again, it just depends on, you know, yeah. Sure, you got two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see what everybody do. Everybody does, excuse me. Use proper English. We, um, unless I missed it, uh, where's the punt competition at? And how far are you going to go with it, you know, uh, uh, into the game and into the preseason? Right. Yeah, that, that's where the preseason will be big at that position, the punter spot. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Glad Fasty gave you popsicles.